Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Midweek War. It is Mad Mike, and we are here to talk some Lucha Underground, and I don't know where I am. Am I in the temple? Are we doing this again? Yes, I'm doing this again. Okay. I'm doing... I, I You're warned, in Pittsburgh, Mike. This is I, the Mayhem Studio. I warned people I would be doing this bit for every show. Okay. I did warn... All right, I'm in Pittsburgh. I know I'm in <laughs> Pittsburgh. I've been in Pittsburgh for a couple days now, even though... Matt Carlins has not been able to find me. Matt, I'm I'm here. Do you see me? No, but I hear your voice. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> all right. Well, Matt, it sounds like you're in Pittsburgh. Matt, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like I'm in Pittsburgh. And with me is a guy who who is not caught up on Lucha Underground. So this might be very spoilery for him. It's Mule Larry. How are you, sir? Good, good. I'm good. I'm just looking through the. Lucha Library right now to see which episode I'm actually stopped on right now. And <laughs> I'm halfway through episode five of season one. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Um, well, th- this is definitely not episode. This is not season one. This is not episode five. We are, we are balls deep in season three. We are balls deep. And um, Matt, what, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to, you and I are going to give our, our uh, palabras and then we're going to play two truths and a lie with Larry. For a quick second, what do you think, Matt? I think that sounds fantastic, but I, you know, I'm I'm really worried. I feel like there's part of this week's episode of Lucha that we shouldn't openly discuss around, especially Sorg and probably Larry too, because um, it, it's so spoilerific. I, I, I think, I think they told Sorg, me already. Sorg, maybe it would be for the best if you just kind of like. Take your cans off, and maybe maybe you should just leave the room for a minute. Can, but, can just, but everybody else is in the room. Right. Yeah. But, 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 but who's gonna who's gonna switch? No, Matt. I'm pre- I'm pretty just, sure. Just I, take your head front, just, just just leave it on, Mike, and just just go away. Matt, just Matt, put, put I, in the little box or something. I kind of told it's him. Already. Already. But you told him already. I kind of told him. Did you tell Larry? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that we're, trust me. Don't worry. I I have ways of of getting around this two truths and a lie. Um. It's gonna be <sighs> it's, friends. Don't let friends spoil Lucha Underground. Folks. I'm aware of that, but Sorg is going to be catching up eventually. And Larry said he didn't mind. Everyone's gonna up. catch up eventually. I'm so, I'm so far behind that it's gonna be completely fresh for, fresh to me by the time I get that's to that. Kind of my take a, on it. That's point, why I was yeah. never worried about listening to the podcast back in the day when I just vicariously lived Lucha through you guys mm-hmm. because I was just like, well, eventually I'll, I'll forget all this. But okay. but sometimes it clicks and it's just like, oh shit, that's the thing we were talking about. All right. All right, uh, so so Matt, before before we do a special two truths in a life for Larry, uh, qualis tu per labra. Wait, I, I wrote it down because uh, my Spanish is no. Wait, we're supposed, we're supposed we're um, supposed to speak Spanish. Oh no, no, uh, that's just something that Antonio Garza decided, or maybe I decided. Sure. Okay, back I don't know day. Spanish. Like I, I I I'm asking, what is his one word? Oh, gotcha. yes, yes, qualis yes. tu per labra. Okay. So you're getting me, an education. Me palabra, here. me palabra es apoyando. Sorg, I demand. Po- I demand um, uh, some okay. titles. Okay, I'm getting. I'm gonna need some translation on that, Matt. No, it's, it's, what? it's just like it's, if you're. Wait, wait. It's just like if you're in the temple because you don't get subtitles. Then yeah, you don't. You're in. No, no, no. I, no they're not subtitling Pentagon Junior. Are you sure? While I'm watching the, him talk, the they, only did, thing, they did for me. Uh, that, that, you, you were. You were not in the temple. I felt like I was. It felt like, <laughs> hey, you know what? That's no, how good it is that. I agree with that. It feels like you're in the temple because I swear to God, there have been several times where I've just screamed out Culero and I've had people be very nervous for me because like, why are you screaming at a television? I'm like, well, did you see what he fucking did? Culero. Sorry, this is a tangent. <laughs> yes. Uh, Matt, what, what was your word again? Apoyando. A- and what does that mean? Uh, it's a Spanish word that Rampiro taught me this week. But I forget what it means exactly, but it has something to do with um, the fans kind of cheering for both guys. So oh, like right, right. Okay. The, being a smart. I think it's Spanish for smart. Uh, I'm yes. on, though. <laughs> we, we need to clear it on, on, it's on Spanish for smart. Yeah. Spanish both for these smart. guys. Both, both these guys. These guys. Oh, That's God. I'm Hashtag fight forever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, my word for this week is going to be. Sploosh. Sploosh? Sploosh. <laughs> is that English or Spanish? That's mm-hmm. English. Haven't you seen Nickelodeon? Yeah. Haven't you seen Archer? <laughs> Not in the same context as Archer. But... 
I mean, maybe in the same context as Archer. You know, it depends on how it depends on how much you get off on violence. Uh, all right, so Larry. Yes, sir. Do you know how two truths and a lie work? I'm somewhat familiar. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give you three statements. Okay. One of them will be true. Uh, two of them will be true. One of them will be complete bullshit. Okay. Now for Lucha Underground, I've never done this one for Lucha Underground before, so I'm going to try and make all of them sound as completely fucked up as possible. Okay. And okay. All right. Um. <laughs> so let's see. Truth number one is um. Rey Mysterio. You know Rey Mysterio? I do. Um, he encountered a time traveler who went into the past and kidnapped his son Dominic and <coughs> brought him to Boyle Heights to train, and now he goes under the name Prince Puma. It's <laughs> funny that you mentioned that because that's the episode I'm partway through on right now is the okay. Boyle Heights brawl. Okay. Okay. That's, 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 fact. that's statement one. Okay. Statement two... Is a man... Fact the second. Fact the second, excuse me. You're right, you're right, Matt. Fact the second. A man <laughs> who self-identifies as a machine walks <laughs> around with a glove that is charged with electricity. Okay? Okay. Fact the third is a, um, a former uh, AAA champion laughed and giggled... When a buxom blonde cowgirl smacked him on the ass. Remember, two of these are a hundred percent true. Two of them are one thousand percent true. And I know you like to do trick questions too. I, I this is not a trick. This so, is not a trick because you have no way of knowing which one's true and which one's false. Okay. Right, right. And plus, this yeah. is a new thing for the show. So yeah, I'm right. gonna say the Prince Puma thing. Is a lie because there's no way that's related to Rey Mysterio that can be that big, as big as Prince Puma. Not even a time traveling <laughs> version of his own son. No, and I think you. Well, took you that have, from, you haven't gotten to it yet. Aerostar is a time traveler. You took that from TNA. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a, a TNA fucking wishes they were that creative. <laughs> TNA fucking wishes they were that creative. But that, that one is the false statement. Um, um, the, but that is a storyline that I actually pitched to Krista Joseph. <laughs> so it happened in your mind. It, in my head, until and, I see and, otherwise, it's headcanon. And it may happen in season four. Uh, he, said, he said part of what I just said was I, true. Until you, until you brought up the Prince Puma thing, I could have believed it because I was listening to... Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim Ross's podcast <laughs> with Rey Mysterio and he was talking about training his son. So yeah. I could have believed it up until that point. But um, um it, but parts of what I said was true. Which and, parts? Well, the Aerostar being a time traveler thing okay. is a hundred percent true. <laughs> Within the okay. terms of Lucha Underground, he is a time traveler. Alright. And from what from that statement, I like almost verbatim when I sent it to Joseph, he said, part of that kind of happens. I'm like Holy shit, okay. <laughs> so I don't know what part that is. Um, I do have a new theory, Matt, that I'll run by you after we go through our uh, good and our bad. But uh, yeah, so there are things, yet yeah, there's definitely a guy who self-identifies as a machine who walks around with, with a, uh, a fist that has lightning shooting from it. And there is a AAA champion who giggled when a Bucks and Blunt slapped him on the ass. Both of those things happened. Yeah. Is the last one Tejano? Yes, it is. Oh no, my god, I cannot <laughs> yes, wait is. for this. Yes, it is. Is it, so. <laughs> is it, is it Brenda? Yes. yes. It is beautiful Brenda. Oh, like I'm envisioning this scene and and I can't wait to get to this now. Is that, was that this week? Yes. Oh my god. It's, it, and, every, everything I mentioned is this week. And I know the machine thing because I know where this it's all happened in one happened. week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Wow. Catch you the, need to catch up. Catch the fuck. Up. I'm like 50 <laughs> episodes behind. This is why, yeah. you know how much money I've spent on Lucha Underground because I've demanded to own it on iTunes? Oh this is why. <laughs> Dude, I'm Larry, telling you. This ain't like your typical wrestling show where they just go round and round in circles and you never get anywhere. This actually has real plot progression on a weekly basis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very foreign. A lot of a lot of wrestling observers and fans 
find this very hard to get their minds around a, a wrestling program that actually progresses forward and yeah. it, it engages you know, it makes you excited to watch the product. It actually, it's a difficult thing. It actually forces you to remember things that have happened in the past. Yeah, yeah because, I've noticed that already. There, yeah, because yeah. – um, Spoiler alert. It makes you go back and look at shit in the background because you're afraid you missed something from eight or nine episodes ago. Um, spoiler alert, okay? I'm not going to say who or what, but do you remember the first episode of Lucha Underground where you yeah. just see a random guy training in a gym? Uh, I don't remember that part. Okay. Watch the first five minutes of that again because he shows up at the fucking end of the season. Huh. Yeah. Um, it was... I don't want to spoil him, but that's fine. That's okay. Junior. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, Junior. Yeah, the guy. Then he does the stuff. Yes, he says, "Don't do it. You can't go in the temple." Then he goes in the temple, or his dad goes in the temple. Yeah, blah 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 blah. He does the stuff in the things. He does the stuff in the things, and then Ray and then Ray Ray's got to be like, "I got to go take care of this." And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and then someone says, "I'm not done with you yet." And well, they weren't done. Okay. And so, Sorg's out of the picture. Now that we've officially have broken Sorg again, uh, Matt. <laughs> Why did you switch to everything that just happened was completely accurate? It's all completely it's accurate. It's all completely like, accurate. That's the best thing. Like, when I try to explain a storyline in Lucha Underground, it's automatically always, always one of the best sentences I've ever said in my life. <laughs> <laughs> who was the who, who was it came up to me like a little bit ago? It was it was somebody not in our crew, I think, and they're talking about Lucha. And like, this is the only place where I can say that there's a dragon that that knows nunchucks, mm -hmm. whose friend is a time traveler <laughs> yep. that also happens. To, was that you? Yep. Like in the yeah. a couple, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like well, um, Drago looked like a shiny Gyarados this week. <laughs> I saw that. Wow. Tweet. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm not even joking, Matt. Back me up on this. Steve cut it. What? Back me up on this. He looked like a shiny Gyarados. <laughs> I'm real big on Drago right now. Because, uh, what? Yeah, you will. Keep, you have. Have, has he flown yet? Um, <laughs> no. Has he spit fire? <laughs> no. Because he does both. Yes. He's I, an actual real dragon. I just watched the triple threat match with him, Phoenix, and... and Aerostar? Uh, no, and uh, Pentagon Jr. Oh, oh Pentagon, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Pentagon's but, also up there for me. Um, yeah. Conan's like, yeah. I brought these guys from Mexico, man. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, stuff. I know, I know like, we're typically like kind of a recap show, but it's always good to see the new fan thing, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, it just it's joining yeah. the fold. Especially, oh, God, what happens with... Somebody beat a deer also. Yep, yep, that's King Corno. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. King Cuerno. He just got introduced. King yeah. Cuerno spoiled us yeah. on the movie Get Out like years before There are a lot of animal <laughs> heads in this show. <laughs> really are oh man all right, so anyway let, let's talk about this week <laughs> let's talk about this week hey hey matt qual yes qual, qual is too bueno um that, that's okay. what is your good that's what, what is, is my good? good thanks for the translation he's telling uh, me my good <laughs> i don't know spanish <laughs> uh, my good this week is pentagon dark and just the way that like he was rolling and the way he was presented this week you know they're just it's not, they don't always, for me, they don't always nail it, um, especially since he changed his name, but there are weeks where Pentagon Dark is doing his thing, and I'm like, I want to see this guy wrestle, see this guy have a match with Kenny Omega, I want to see him have a match with Okada, I want to see him wrestle Brock Lesnar, I want to see him wrestle everybody, <laughs> and like, I have like, and this was like one of those weeks where it's just so badass, you just cannot stand it anymore. You're just like, I just want to see him fight anybody. I want crossovers. Yeah, I want well, three matches now. Pe Pentagon Dark could turn Randy Orton into Bob Orton really quickly. Oh my god, that'd be awesome. Broken arm. He's he give him broken arm. Cowboy so Bob. He came, he came around. <laughs> was he, was like, he gave him hepatitis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he does have oh. cero miedo. So, oh man. All right. <laughs> Me bueno this week is gotta gotta go to that end segment, uh, Matt. We're gonna talk about it. Yeah, I know we're gonna talk about it. Yeah, um, in front of all these people, we didn't see it. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Okay, that's, that's fine. okay. So basically, um, this is gonna be another one of the best sentences you've ever said in it, your life. It really is. <laughs> it really is. All right. Um, so prepare yourself. I'm ready. All right. Uh, so Dario Cueto, the owner and proprietor of yep, Lucha Underground, yep. has a boss who works for. Um, 
the city of Boyle Heights. He is Councilman Delgado. Councilman Delgado told Dario to organize Tell a new place, Councilman Delgado. Lorenzo Lamas from from we we we, we, we went to, over this yeah, part before yeah. before we went live. With uh, yeah, no, trust me, okay. Sorg Sorg didn't know that was Lorenzo Lamas. I, I didn't realize. No, <laughs> he didn't know. I had to be told to. Yeah, um, so Lorenzo Lamas. Okay, basically, uh, he or he told Dario to organize this Battle of the Bulls tournament for a for an ultimate opportunity. The ultimate opportunity is um, the ability. The winner will possess this steel gauntlet that has infused with it the power of a god. And the basically, um, Cage won that tournament. Cage, who self-identifies as a machine, he is not a man. Is he, he the is time a traveler with the electric hand? Uh, he he is not a time traveler. He just has the electric. Hand. Oh, okay. There are two. Be- separate because people. he gotcha. he won the Battle of the Bulls. He beat Tejano. Um. And he was given the gauntlet. And he wears the gauntlet now. He never takes it off. And it makes him angrier. Now, if you've never seen Cage wrestle yet, he's a fairly angry guy to start. Um, and he gets even angrier and more aggressive. And when it does, his hand shoots electricity like he's fucking about to go Super Saiyan. And basically, um, the because you you've become familiar with Lucha's end credit scene, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the end credit scene this week is Dario told Cage that Councilman Dogal was expecting him for some kind of meeting, and Cage is like, "I don't want to go to this." He's like, "You have to go. You he's expecting you. Trust me, it'll be fine." So Cage goes to Boyle Heights City Hall late at night. There's and a city hall. There is a city hall, Sorg. Which I believe that I believe. I yeah, believe. Councilman Delgado has his own business cards. We got to see it. We got to see his business card. Um, Could you ask for one of those? I, God, there's so many props I want from Ledger Underground. I want Dario's ledger because Dario has a booking oh, ledger. Yeah. At one point, I just fucking need it. Yeah, um, when he makes a match, he like writes in it, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he writes in his he writes in his ledger. It's you. Fantastic. You will take on sexy star, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so Cage shows up at at the city hall, um, and Councilman Delgado is like, "We're going to." Oh, he's like, "Oh, you haven't taken it off. That's good. That means it's working." And Cage is like, "That means what's working?" And he's like, "Don't worry about it. You're just going to get a lot stronger, a lot more powerful, and a lot faster. And you won't even know what's happening." And Cage grabs him by a throat, slams him against the wall, puts him through the wall, like, and then he drops him. He's like. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what came over me. And then punches his head off. Like, to the point where it actually makes a sploosh it? sound. It, it, it was like mama had a baby and the head popped off. <laughs> 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 and he pulls back a bloody arm. Oh. And it's got all, like... They look like bits of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches dripping out of his glove. <laughs> peanut butter and jelly <laughs> Strawberry but, jelly, I'm guessing. Yes, of okay. course. And that's how it ends with him just pulling. And he's like, and he's like, because um, that was the finale. Council, Councilman Delgado says, but "Don't leave out the best part. Don't leave out the best I'm, part." I'm going to council because count, the last words of Councilman Delgado is like, "Because uh, Cage apologized," and Councilman Delgado says, "It's okay. You were just acting like a man." And after he punches his head off, Cage goes, "I'm not a machine. I'm not a man. I'm a machine." <laughs> And that's how we end the show. And, and it was fucking walks, brilliant. Oh, man. No, no, no. And then he walks away. All right. And, and you get the wide shot. In case you're having any doubts, you can see that oh, clearly yeah. Councilman Delgado's head has been splooshed off. And there's like an eyeball sitting in the foreground and Cage stomps on it on his way out of the Oh, frame. my God. I didn't that's even notice that part. Show. I didn't oh, notice that it? part. Oh, Shit. Come on. I, I blame. Watch, that's why you watch till the end. No, I blame my shitty hotel Wi-Fi. All right. I blame shitty hotel Wi-Fi for that. I did not notice that he stepped on the eyeball. That's even. See what I mean? This fucking yeah. show. <laughs> this show. So here's so here's the question, Mike. Yes. Between you and me. Uh huh. Did Dario Cueto know Cage was going to do that when he sent him to see Councilman Delgado? Oh man, that's a good question. I honestly, I don't think so, because we know 
You don't there's, think Dario? No, because there's because there's a guy just, above you Delgado. You don't think there's the slightest chance? I know he plays scared around Councilman Delgado. You don't think there's the slightest chance that perhaps Dario has been a step ahead of Councilman Delgado the whole time? Well, he is pretty good at controlling people who have the strength of gods. So, I mean, maybe. But I don't know. I don't think so. Because I think there's someone above Councilman Delgado that... Oh, there's definitely not, someone above yeah. Councilman Delgado. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think that Dr. person's Claw going to be too happy. The back of Mayor Mystery. God, I wish. <laughs> oh, my God. If Mayor Mystery was... He's the, the mayor entire... of Boyle Heights. <laughs> oh, wow. I wish. I really, really wish. That'd Pitch be that. amazing. Well, he listens. Chris, that one's for free. Contact Mary Mystery if you need a big bad for Lucha Underground Season 4. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, but Matt, I know it's difficult to come up with one for the show, but Qual is too Malo. What um, is your bad? I got that. <laughs> I, I'm really feeling a void. Uh, and the void is that Famous B has no client, and he has no purpose, and he's I don't want him to. I know he's so there to be funny, but I, I feel bad for him just going in there being a total joke. He shouldn't even be wrestling. He should have a client. He should just be a manager. He Why is he going to get his ass kicked by Tejano? Tejano! <laughs> Why does that have to happen? He should join the Titus brand. He basically is the Lucha Underground Titus O'Neill. Yeah. But, oh, and uh, awesome. by the way, if you call 423 Get Fame, you will get fa- Famous Beast voicemail. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a real thing. We, it's we, a real thing. We, we left him several messages on this show. I left the messages when I was in California. Four, two, <laughs> yeah. three. Because I was, I was, it was, it's when I was like Get first trying to catch fame. up, and I, and I watched that, and it, like I was just randomly watching season two episodes, and I saw that, and I was like, I want to call this. Yeah. Oh, I called it immediately. So yeah. Like. Yeah. Are you? It's, is it, it? Four, two, three. Two, oh. Yeah. Get fame. 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 I love that there was a cardboard cutout in the one episode when he was fighting, <laughs> and uh-huh. it its head got cut off by scissors. And then I thought, okay, so I thought, oh, he's he's calling right now, so let's get some reactions. Put on speaker. Put on speaker. Larry. Okay. They asked for my name. It did. That's yes. weird. Maybe someone else bought the number. Oh no. Oh, this could be even better. I hope not. <laughs> but we need to call it afterwards yeah, yeah. yeah we'll call it afterwards. <laughs> but um but yeah um all right so yeah I, I can see what you're being Matt. but i because um it was a matchup in the cueto cup tejano versus famous b and famous b said i i want to recruit you like i don't want to fight you so he just laid down and matt i know you said that was a bad but it brought out the best line from vampiro vampiro was like I was in a company where they tried this before. It didn't go over too well. <laughs> <laughs> Matt was like, yeah, what happened with that? I'm like, well, the company's not in business anymore. So. Uh, I, I'm just realizing I'm up to, like, uh, what, episode 11? I haven't seen uh, King Quino yet. Um, I don't think he's that much of a factor on this season. Wow. Yeah. He'll be as heavy as he is on the I haven't seen him in about a wow. minute. Okay. What was that, Matt? I was saying we haven't seen him in about a minute. So. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? I mean, it might be a a logistic thing with the actual guy yeah. behind King Corner. Yeah. Um, but uh, me Malo for this week, ju- I just felt bad for the people who were in the stands. When oh my god! There, yeah, there was a match between Aerostar and Drago. Um, Drago looking like a shiny Gyarados and all. And was it Drago that dove out? No, it was Aerostar. It was Aerostar. Okay. Um, did a suicide dive yeah. and went and, and, and overshot Drago and went into the second row of chairs. Yeah, T- took out like, like six or seven people. Threw at least. the fans in the front row into the second row of chairs, head first. Yep. Like, epic crash of well, I gotta say, there is a pretty lengthy uh, thing that you sign when you go in there. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so, I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure about that. Yeah. I promise to catch Aerostar when he jumps <laughs> off the high thing. Sword? Oh, I should have read, read, read that. I should have read that. Where were you sitting so I can look? Where was I sitting? Yeah. Uh, uh, right, right above, uh, oh, really? right above Melissa Santos. You were on season. You were for season three. Yeah. So, okay. so like, uh, apparently this week I might be popping up from what I'm told because Alex says that the uh, the 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 you know basically the watch has started. 
uh, uh, to okay. where we might be. Because oh, well. how many times did Aerostar land on you while you were watching the show? Uh, well, I was not where I was. That's for sure because I was on that. Well, I was on that elevated NBA. platform on the left. So. Um, that doesn't mean he can't reach you. That's true. That is true. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they have jumped from the ring to that, and and vice versa before. So, and I think we've established that he's got rocket boots, right? Yeah, that's like, true. Like that is true. That. Absolutely. So, yeah. Oh, sorry, we got a loose connection on you again. I feel like I feel like another podcast now. Yeah. Are you there? Hello. Sorry. Hello. 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 I'm checking this end. You're checking that end. Hello. Oh. Hello. Just unplug it and plug it back in. <laughs> yeah, unplug it. Restart it. Unplug it. Plug it back in. We're good. All right. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Hello. Mm. Keep talking. Hello. 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 I just gotta find the sweet spot. Hello. Hello. There, there it is. is. I'm just gonna there keep my hand is. right here. Okay. No. Yep. And you moved right. it. I moved it. All right. I gotta keep my hand right here. This okay. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, but uh, Aerostar is basically like a time traveling Iron Man. Yep. Because because he even has like the little arc reactor in the center of his chest. Yep. Yep, uh, and, yeah. and he basically comes out that way on, on like like King of Trios. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Jeez. Oh man. All right. Uh, so Matt, um, I know we don't like to mess around with things that happen in Temple, but Qualis to Cambio this week. What is your? I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with this one. I'm, I'm finding it hard to come up with anything I really want to change. I thought it was a really good show. Um, I just wish Aerostar didn't have to leave us in the first round, but I, I understand why they did Aerostar versus Drago, but man, Mike, Aerostar's so freaking awesome. He, he really He's is. so freaking awesome. He's always got something fresh that I haven't seen before in a ring, and it's goofy, and it doesn't necessarily look like it's going to hurt anybody, but he's he's always doing something crazy. And like, I, I think there was a point where like I would look at him and Arhenis when they first showed up and have been like, you know, these two random, you know, interchangeable guys. No, none of that anymore. <laughs> it's Aerostar is like the man. And Arhenis is like rogue was, kill. Was Aerostar so. the first guy to do a huge leap in the temple? I, I want to say yes. I think so. But Jump uh, from a very what, high place. What's a huge but leap? But there's still Phoenix nothing Phoenix as scary as the... Um, okay, that, it was Phoenix then. It was it was, was he, in the, um, the he, triple threat match? Yeah, he jumped, okay. he jumped off that platform... Yeah, like um, right above Dario's office. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I can remember if it was Phoenix or Arrowstar. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't remember if it was Phoenix or Arrowstar. Still that. not as crazy as the uh, whatever that the, the the trust fall dive that he does every once in a while. That's true. He did bust did bust that out against Drago. Yeah, I, I like how this match with Drago seemed different because there was actual like animosity this time around. Yeah, but then there was like then there was they played up all the hesitation. So I mean, clearly mm-hmm. Drago's not. Yeah, it's, it's being coerced. I, I, we're still waiting for the third installment of How to Train Your Drago. So. <laughs> um, my my change if I if I could change anything this week, I would have had one upset. Like because we had the Mac moving forward easily, we had Pentagon moving forward easily, Tejano moving forward easily, and I mean Drago versus Aerostar is a coin flip, but Drago's the one that has like kind of a storyline now, so. It was all the favorites moving forward. I hope. I don't think this will be the case, but I hope Lucha doesn't do that with all of the first round. Like I would have loved to see Mal Suerte just pull an upset somehow. Don't be sad that your upset prediction didn't come true. No, like I, I told you, Mal Suerte was the least of the rabbit, rabbit tribe. I'm aware of that, but I mean, we will get like Mac versus Tejano now, and yeah. um, Pentagon versus Drago. Which holy yeah. shit. That's gonna I be know. a very good match. That's yeah. It yeah. and and this, these are two different versions of the characters that you oh, see. Because really? right now he's Pentagon Dark and Drago is a shiny red Gyarados. Yeah, Larry really hasn't even met Pentagon. Oh no, you you Junior have not. Yet. You have not really even yeah. experienced true Pentagon the, Junior yet. The first so you'll time get you there. see Pentagon, like, has he cut a promo yet? No, no, he's just been. Yeah, there. just wait till he gets a promo because then he's. Maybe get like about, episode twelve or thirteen, and then it gets yeah. real. Once he starts talking about his master, that's when you need to be paying attention. <laughs> and again, mm-hmm. and right. we ain't spoiling that shit for you because friends hey, hey, don't uh, let hey, friends Mike, I mean, spoil Lucha Underground. Mike, I know Milo Suerte didn't get the win, but he did get a nickname. What was that? Thumper. I, Thumper. <laughs> 
Because they're from the rabbit tribe, you see. <laughs> just a little guy. <laughs> He's just a little guy. Oh, God. All right. Uh, so, Matt, uh, how many wrestling shows did you watch this week? Was it just Lucha? Yeah, just Lucha. It's the okay. only wrestling show I watch. Okay, so out of the one shows, <laughs> where do you rank Lucha Underground this week? Uh, number one for all time. Forever <laughs> and ever. Excellent. Um, uh, Your wrestling show sucks. You're not watching Lucha Underground. You're making the wrong decision. That's a fair that's point. That's all. Um, and if you're not caught up on Lucha, sort on of, it. Larry. Uh, I, I just scrubbed the recent episode, and I'm not in it. Just, just putting that out there. Good <laughs> I was kind of curious. Yeah, Sorg is the only person <laughs> who's ahead and behind on Lucha Underground. <laughs> so he's like a time traveler. He's kind of yeah. like... He, he watches Aero Star on this podcast. Okay, a year ago... Arrow Sorg! Like, Arrow Sorg! I kind of... A year ago... A year ago in May, I watched matches that have not aired yet. <laughs> yeah, because it's funny. When, um, when Matt and I were talking about doing the Bracketology, Sorg responds... Oh, that tournament. We're like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> everything was like second or third round that I saw. So I actually, when the when they were looking at the brackets, which we got early, I'm looking at it and I'm just like, oh, that's how that match happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I so, didn't, and I didn't tell them which one. So, yeah. so Matt and I, when we're doing the bracketology with Garza... It took everything in me not to fucking look at his face. Because if you ever want to win some money, <laughs> play poker with that man. Yeah. He has no poker face at all. <laughs> like I know, I know it's your reaction us. for one thing. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so I'm just not looking at Sorg for the rest mm-hmm. of the show. Mm-hmm. And as they went and they're talking about like where things are because they know where the storyline's going better than I do at this point because I'm not uh, right. I'm not up to this point yet. Yeah, I, I like they they talk about a concept. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and Sorg's like, oh, maybe that could happen. I'm like, fuck you, Sorg. Like, I should just leave the room. <laughs> I still I want to I want to spoil this one thing so bad because they're like because uh, oh Sorg because there's if there, you do I will burn there down. There is the something they do that has a <laughs> deep connection to something we used to have so much fun with on the show oh god like damn it like eight years ago what that's enough that's enough (laughs) that's enough time that's enough hold on hold on hold on hold on i'm I'm gonna make i'm gonna make one guess Mm -hmm. does mike knox show up (laughs) you know what i can't tell you that because friends don't spoil lucha all right, that's, that's a no. right. That's friends a no. I saw, spoiler, so. I saw his face. I saw his face. That's a no. <laughs> but a no. still, you know. Yes. You wouldn't put it past them. That's true. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Like they they made me care about so many. Like, be honest. You're you're on season one, episode five. Do you yes. care about Chavo Guerrero? No. Not you really. will. <laughs> you he's, fucking will. He's kind of feuding with Sexy Star right now. Yeah. Yeah, no, trust me. Chavo? How how do you feel about Sexy Star? She's fine. Eh. There are other there are other feuds that I'm more interested in. Okay. okay. Who who are your who are your like let's say top five people in Lucha right now? Um Prince Puma. Okay. Um Drago. Okay. Um Pentagon. Oh, who's the Johnny Mundo? Oh, Masqueria Sagrada? Yes. <laughs> for, the, for, the, for those of you on audio, um, Larry raised his height about waist high. <laughs> um, you're gonna have you're gonna do just fine. And then uh oh god, who's the other one? I can't wait um, until you meet Pimpinella Escarada. I was that? just thinking that. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't wait until you meet a man named Pimpy. Not not uh not um the guy with the deer head, the one with the female manager. No, no more No, not him. Oh. Uh, the other one. Oh, Son of Havoc? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Son, Son of, of Havoc. Havoc. And Ivelisse. Ivelisse is awesome, too. Yeah, she's the one. She just lost to uh, Sexy Star. I just yes. I just saw the one where she got injured again. It's so mm-hmm. sad. It's so yeah, sad. Yeah, she gets injured a lot. Yeah, poor thing. But, um, yeah. Um, that's gonna that, be really difficult for them to shoot with injuries and stuff. Yeah, because they gotta yeah. rewrite a lot. We, we that's that's something we've had a conversation with them about. Because yeah, they've had to re, they've had to change a few of their stories. Like yep. one of the stories for Ultima Lucha, they had to almost completely rewrite. Like the first Ultima Lucha, they had to almost completely rewrite it. Wow. 
because of a bad injury. But um, yeah, that's a, that's a good top five. That's a good top five. Like, yeah, yeah. They are all quite significant moving forward. Quite and significant. I think about everybody still quite significant. Yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, nobody's gotten their head squished. Um, not Don't that. not yeah. as of press time. <laughs> not as of press time no. <laughs> and I don't see head squishing at the re- at the taping. So, well, I mean, you wouldn't. Yeah. No, no. I'm just saying. If there was a live head squishing, that's something that they probably have, would have they made have a few. They have not killed somebody in the temple yet. So, no. no. Here's hoping. Um, well, <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps I have we, to watch. We think. Uh, we think. Big Rick and Prince Puma in a street fight tonight. Yeah, oh right. yeah. Oh, that, that's good that's stuff. That's the other half of episode five that I haven't oh, seen. Oh, Big Rick. Does Big Rick still have both his eyes. Sorg. Friends, me. don't let friends spoil Lucha Underground. I thought yeah, for sure. Sorg. Right now, if if he did not, I would have said something. I know exactly where he's at. I've been wa- I've been watching the old episodes. Okay, you look yeah. him right in the eye. Yes, Sorg. Don't make me put on the sword glasses and do your job. Again. It's on Netflix. Wait a minute. Oh no. Oh no. I can't see what's going on now. But <laughs> wow, okay. I can't see either. Uh, <laughs> they might so, be dirty and foggy. So, uh, guys, um, I, I I really like Blue Underground this week. I, I thought a lot of the guys, you know, um. Had, had a lot of good matches, a lot of good progression. Um, the segments, eh, you know, take them or leave them. I thought the mo- most of them were okay, but it, it was a good It was a good episode. I good can't episode. see the look on his face. <laughs> Neither <laughs> could I. <laughs> I don't know what to do. You'll have to check it out later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's clever. Let's see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, Sorg. All right, uh, so for me, the rankings this week... <laughs> Out of the three shows I've watched, because... Only three? Yeah, I know. I, I usually watch four for this. I'm at five, man. <laughs> okay, if you want to compare the actual number of wrestling shows I've watched, I'm oh pretty sure God. I beat you. I'm t- No, just promotions. Or yeah. show shows. I'm in the yeah, double digits. N- yeah, no, because like I, th- this is just for... The Midweek War! The, we, we watch okay. certain shows throughout the week, but... It's kind of a concept. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and once they add the, the Cruiserweight, the... The England show, a possible upcoming women's show. Like, we're going to have a lot of shows. I might have to drop something. You should just I'm drop already. That is drop acceptable. Well, I, I dropped, <laughs> you should just drop I dropped raw. NXT already okay. for Lucha Underground. There you um, go. You know what? That's, ne- that's a solid choice. Raw might be next. That's a solid choice. And the only hey, reason I'm saying Raw over you SmackDown. You get more than three hours of your life back every week to pick up Raw. SmackDown. You know what? If you drop Raw and double time through Lucha. That's a good way to live your life. It's a good way to live Three your episodes life. of Lucha every Monday? Oh my god, that's what you should do during Raw. That's what you should absolutely do during Raw. Maybe maybe after Great Balls of Fire. We'll see. I kind of want to see where the Samoa Joe thing goes. Oh. I, <laughs> spoiler alert. Nope. No, nope. we're good. Nope. He's going to get squashed. Hey, you never minutes. know. It could be like the women's match at WrestleMania. Yeah. They might throw the crowd. The fans might throw a hashtag in there, and he might get pushed to SummerSlam. I severely doubt it. I hope you're right. I severely doubt it. But um, anyway, so Lucha was number one for me this week. Um, out of the three shows I watched, because I'm not watching Impact this week, uh, because I am taking a mental health vacation. So that means no Impact for Mad Mike. Um, I will, however, be punishing myself for that next week by doing a double shot of Impact, which is kind of like doing a double shot of Absinthe. Except you get a worse trip. Um, so, uh, Matt, was there anything else to add about Lucha before we uh, before we uh, go with the plugs? I just wanted to ask real quick um, regarding the the lovely uh, Johnny Mundo Rey Mysterio vignette. Oh my god! Are I we gonna to... get Are we gonna get two months of these hype videos? I really hope or like, so. Perhaps longer. <laughs> like how I, long is we gonna? I hope it's a guy with a different accent doing every different vignette. By hype well, videos. Well, that, that was clearly um, what's his name from Ultimo Lucha, the first one, right? Was it? I didn't uh, recognize it. The guy who jumped in for Vampiro, that was his voice, right? Oh, okay. I maybe yeah, I forget was, he, was name. he British? Yeah. Okay, then I, I completely forget that part. So yeah, that must have been him. Are then. they hype videos the way uh 
R Truth and Goldust are doing their hype videos for their Fuck no. Year. No, it's no, they're like actually Rocky. good. It's more like Rocky and yeah. Drago. Yeah, it basically um. is. Like Johnny Mundo is uh, is going to his dojo and Rey Mysterio is jogging down the streets of Boyle Heights. Yeah. And they're acting like this is the first in a, like a 32 part 24/7 series Did, like Showtime hype did like he have his mask on? Like, yes. Or did he just have a hood and they always shot him from the back? No, no, he has his mask on. Okay. They actually start. They actually open the package with him bending down to put his mask on. Oh. So it's like Ray Mysterio Jr., a luchador legend. Like, like it's British it's accent, a whole please. thing. Oh, Ray Mysterio Jr., a luchador legend. Wait, wait, wait. That's Australia. Wait, wait. They threw a British accent in Lucha Underground. Yes. Oh, jeez. Yes. It makes me want Jack Gallagher and Lucha Underground so fucking bad. Why didn't the Hardys ever go to this? Because this is a perfect place for them. Because they taped all of season three before the Hardys left TNA. Oh, that's oh. I. I assume that is basically the only reason. I guess. Because got Matt. Can, can we just imagine the broken Matt Hardy in Lucha Underground? He would, you what, he would destroy the temple. I. I I'll see your broken Matt Hardy, and I will give a nice plug for uh, an article by our friend Brandon Stroud, who wrote an article for Uproxx about Glacier <laughs> in WCW, and about how awesome Glacier would have been in Lucha Underground. Hey, Glacier is right. Glacier is still my go-to wrestler in WCW vs. NWO Revenge. Still my go-to. <laughs> still my go-to. Thank, thank you for the respect, Sork. Thank you for the off-camera respect. All right. So, Matt, where can the people find you on the internet? Um, at Mainstream Matt with one T. And um, that's about it. All right. Uh, Larry, where can the people find you on the internet? At Mad Mike for e Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the wrong one. At Mutilator Larry. Sorg, where can people find you on the internet? At Sorgatron on the Twitter, SorgatronMedia.com, all the podcasting goodness. All right, and you can find me at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter machine. Also, go to at Mayhem Show. Look for the hashtag MM for when I live tweet Lucha Underground. Even with shitty hotel Wi Fi, I was able to watch this week's Lucha Underground and live tweet it. Um, so we will catch you guys next time for more of the Quato Cup on the Mid Week War.